Is the return on investment of owning an NBA franchise the type of thing that only rich people can get? That's what I'm thinking about. So just before the new year, uh, Senator Herb Cole uh, passed away. He was a great Wisconsin business leader, political leader, and uh, civic leader. And I, I had a chance to actually meet him. A good friend of mine used to work in his office uh, here in Wisconsin, and uh, and she was invited me to come to a Bucks game here. We'll pull up a picture. There's there's uh, Senator Cole and I at the old Bradley Center. A great experience having a chance to meet him and uh, reading a lot of the things that have been published about him since his passing. Uh, one of the things that caught my eye was uh, his investment in the Milwaukee Bucks. He bought the Bucks back. In 1985, and one of his goals was to keep the Bucks in Milwaukee, and uh, of course, he sold here back in 2014, uh, ten coming up on 10 years ago, and uh, they talked in the newspaper article about. Uh, when he bought the Bucks, it was he put in twenty million dollars, and then when he sold the Bucks in twenty fourteen, he got five hundred and fifty million dollars. And just looking at the numbers, it seems like holy mackerel, what a great return on investment, right? But being the kind of numbers guy that I am, I wanted to dig into that a little bit. And just for reference, I've seen numbers that say he put in eighteen million or twenty million, and the exact numbers aren't the specifics. But what I did is I went and pulled up and said, okay, what happens if you you know put in twenty million? And almost 30 years later, you come out with 550,000. I'll pull up a quick snapshot from an online calculator, and you can take a look at the number right there in the middle. Starting with 20 million, ending with 550 million over 29 years, that return is 12.1%. Certainly a very nice return, right? I mean, pretty happy if you knew you're going to get 12% over the next 30 years. Golly, you know, snap that up. There's no guarantees in any of that, uh, that you can get that kind of return anyplace. But I took a look at, okay, well, how does that compare? You know, that's a great number, but what does that really mean? What's the context? And so it reminded, actually, doing this, this uh, reminded me of one of the great calculator pages. We'll put a, uh, a link to it in the meeting notes here. But I went in and said, well, we'll took a look and said, well, what did the S&P 500 do over that time frame? And the return was something around 11%. Right, so not quite 12%, a significant difference over a 30-year time frame, but you know that same return in just the S&P 500 would have been 450 or so million dollars. I mean, a pretty significant. And then I took a look at we've got some things that test data going way back, and the type of portfolios that we put together for clients, not just U.S. large cap S&P 500, but have some small cap, have some international, and all stock portfolio over that same time, actually returned just a couple ticks better, just a little over 12. Or it would have, of course. We weren't managing investments back in 1985. You know, it's all hypothetical. But again, the frame of reference going, golly, this great return. Put in 20, you get back 550. Man, how can a regular person do that? Well, that, that is, I mean, just really comparable, at least in this one case, to investing in, you know, in a diversified stock portfolio. So I thought that was really interesting to put some context behind those numbers. And uh, anyway, that's what I'm thinking about here today. And as always, interested in knowing what you're thinking about. If you're watching on YouTube, jot a comment down in the comment box or shoot me an email directly. And as always, thanks for watching.